Welcome to Humanities on the Road. Today we're at the Trinity Center for Urban Life in Philadelphia for the Black Mozart, Joseph Bologna Le Chevalier de Saint George with Charles Petaway. And I'm Tracy Matisak. You know, Humanities on the Road is a joint project of the Pennsylvania Humanities Council and the Pennsylvania Cable Network with the goal of bringing together people from all across the state to talk about art and history and the important ideas that shape our world. We want to extend special thanks to our host, the Trinity Center for Urban Life. You know, this center happens to manage the historic buildings around 22nd and Spruce Streets for the benefit of the neighborhood as well as the Delaware Valley. And you know, Trinity Center is a non-denominational, non-religious organization that encourages the use of its space to enhance the cultural and artistic and educational life of Philadelphia. In fact, the center hosts a wide variety of culturally and ethnically diverse programs. There are just a host of performances and programs that are designed to bring people of all different ages together. These buildings are also the home of Trinity Memorial Church and its social outreach programs that serve the homeless and shut-ins and others who are in need. And thanks to an extensive renovation back in the late 90s, the buildings now provide a really exciting space for lots of wonderful programs like the one that we're about to enjoy here in the Great Hall at Trinity Center. Let me tell you a little bit about our speaker today. Charles Petaway is a Commonwealth speaker with the Pennsylvania Humanities Council. He is an associate professor of piano at Lincoln University. He has studied at the Philadelphia Musical Academy, at Temple University, at the Ravel Academy, at the Tanglewood Summer Music Festival, and the American Conservatory at Fontainebleau, France. He is a first place award recipient for piano performance at the Bartok Kabalevsky Prokofiev International Piano piano competition and the Robert Casadesu piano competition. He has performed at venues all around the world, including the Kennedy Center, the Chicago Symphony Hall, Carnegie Hall, and of course, the Academy of Music. And Charles is going to talk to us about the life story and the music of the man who has come to be known as the Black Mozart. So with that said, please join me as we welcome Charles Petaway. I'm very pleased to be here this evening. I'd like to discuss a remarkable Frenchman. He was a great fencer. He was a composer. He was a conductor. He was a violinist, an artful equestrian. He was an exceptional marksman. He was an elegant dancer. He was an accomplished man who knew many important people, such as the Duke of Orléans, who was his protector, and also the Duke was the cousin of Louis XV. He also knew the Prince of Wales, who was a very good friend of his, who later became King George IV. He also knew Marie Antoinette and her husband, King Louis XVI. He was able to dress in a way that made heads turn everywhere. So he was a fashion plate. So think about it. Here we have a fencer, we have a dancer, a marksman, an artful equestrian, he did all of these things, an elegant dancer, and with all of that, he was spoken of highly to or with the bourgeoisie of France. As I said, he walked among royalty, and he became known as the greatest fencer in France. He also served as a French colonel in the army during the French Revolution. Serving under him was the Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Dumas. 
who was the father of Alexander Dumas, the author of The Three Musketeers, The Count of Monte Cristo, and other great literary works. He was known as a kind, gentle, generous man. As I said, he was constantly discussed with or between the bourgeoisie because of his exotic look, because of his manner, because of his class manner. Even the future president of the United States, John Adams, second president of the United States, in his diary of May 17, 1790, uh, 1779, wrote, Saint-Georges is the most accomplished man in Europe, in running, in riding, in fencing, in dancing, and of course in music. Adam says he could hit the button, any button on the coat of the greatest fencing masters. He will hit a crown piece, a coin, and the head of that coin with a pistol ball, a handgun. So he was able, from a distance, to point a gun and shoot at the head and get it every time. He was quite a marksman. On Christmas Day, 1745, on the island of Guadeloupe, which was a French island in the West Indies, he was born. His father was a wealthy planter from a very prominent family. The father's name was Georges, Georges Bologna de Saint-Georges. His mother's name was Nanon. She became known as La Belle Nanon. His mother was a slave. Let me introduce to you Joseph Bologna Le Chevalier de Saint-Georges, a man for all seasons. Listening to that, one might think, gosh, that sounds a lot like Mozart or even Haydn. Uh, again, it was written during the Classic period. Actually, the Classic period uh, began in 1750 and ended about approximately 1820. Some people say 1827, but basically it began in about 1750. It was a period based on balance and symmetry. We'll talk a little more about that later, but before I do that, this black man, Joseph Bologna de Le Chevalier de Saint-Georges, as I said, was born on the French island of Guadeloupe. His father, wanting the best for his son, recognized that Guadeloupe would not recognize him and he could never take his place as a landed gentry or a gentleman. In France, slavery had been outlawed. Though it still existed in the French colonies, such as Guadeloupe, where planters made fortunes from slave labor. George Joseph's father, had taken steps with the authorities to make sure that his son and Nanon, his mistress, were no longer slaves. George loved his son, even though George was married to a woman by the name of Elizabeth, a French woman, 
And she also had a daughter named Elizabeth as well. He decided, as I've said, that uh, Guadeloupe was not a place to raise his son. So therefore, he moved the entire family, Joseph, Nanon, his wife, and his daughter. Now, you know, that gets a little, you know, shaky in there, but <laughs> nevertheless, he did it. And nobody raised an eyebrow about it, because quite frankly, in the books that I've read, there's not a lot of mention of the Elizabeths in his life. It all seems to be centered around Saint George. Uh, so he decided to sell his plantation and move to France where he would be accepted as a gentleman. Before leaving for Paris, George wanted a title for his son. His new name would be Joseph Bologna Le Chevalier de Saint George. Now, what is a chevalier? That is tantamount to a English knight. So he would really be known as Sir Joseph. Sir Joseph. Now, why could the father get away with this? Because the father worked for the king, Louis XV. He was uh, he had a job in his service. So he was an aristocrat and was able to do many things that aristocrats were able to do. In Paris, status was everything. To be rich was important, but being an aristocrat was even better. George the father was determined that his son Joseph would excel at all the pastimes of a chevalier. At 13, Joseph was sent to board at one of France's most prestigious fencing schools. And uh, this academy was run by a master swordsman by the name of Le Boissier. Uh, mornings at this academy were spent in mathematics, history, languages, music, art, dance, and horsemanship. The afternoons were taken up totally with fencing, a skill at which every young aristocrat had to excel. Within a few years, Joseph was the best fencer in the school. It also helped that he was the tallest Frenchman in the school. Swordsmen from around Europe wanted to challenge him when word spread that he was such a great swordsman. He was the best the school had, and people challenged him. At the school, each student had to fight other students. One student aristocrat made a snide remark about having to fence with a half caste. The usual gentle Joseph picked him up and threw him across the room to the cheers of the rest of the onlooking student body. Very out of character for him. Another incident happened when a master swordsman, Picard from Rouen, challenged Le Boissier's mulatto. Now that was an insult too. George didn't like it. So he really 